Good morning, First St. English Lutheran Church and friends. Welcome to worship today. Whether you are joining us on 1590 Radio or on the YouTube, uh, it's good to have you here, and we pray God's blessings on you as you worship with us today. Today is uh, a number of things, but first let me do a couple of announcements. First, it's International Make Music Day, and in Platform, there have been participation with that in the past years. This year, if you would like to come to the patio at 2.30, there will be some people making music there. Come bring your chair and enjoy some music by people from First English and in the community. Also, the Acts Bible Study does continue tonight at 7 o'clock. I believe we're on chapters 13 and 14. If you would like to just jump in, please do jump in. Uh, email pa intern, pass or intern Jamie and she will get you um, the link to the Zoom. Or you can come on Wednesdays at 5, right? At 5, okay. So uh, we're having a great time. There's about 25 of us from around many different congregations joining in and we're having really good conversations. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please join in. Today is one of my favorite days of the whole year. It's the longest day of the year. It's with light, that is. And so we do celebrate today with uh, a lot of sunshine and beauty in our surrounding area. Today is also Father's Day. And so for all those out there who are fathers, we give thanks for you. So let's take a pause as I say a special blessing for fathers everywhere. Lord God, today we do recognize our fathers, or those who have been father figures in our lives. We give you thanks for their guidance, for their strength, for their love, for their hope, and for their presence in our lives. And we ask you to bless each one of them today. Help them to know that they are a part of our lives now and forever. And the lessons that we have learned from them, we bring into our lives today. So now, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for fathers and ask a special blessing for them. In your name we pray. Amen. We take a, a little breath. And we begin our worship this day with our confession and forgiveness. We do gather as we live in the strong and living name of our God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto each and every one of you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our opening hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Thank you. 
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Romans, the sixth chapter. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 
We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. said to the twelve, a disciple is not above a teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for disciples to be like the teacher, and a slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house of, the house of Beelzebul, how much more will they align those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that not will be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. When I say to you in the dark, tell the light and what you hear whispered, proclaim it from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them will fall on the ground apart from, from your father. And even the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value of than most of the sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foe will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who will lose their life for my sake will find it. Friends, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place where which our parents sigh. We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have been treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Now out from the gloomy past, till now we may stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Amen. Friends, those words was from the song Lift Every Voice and Sing, created as the National Negro uh, Anthem in 1919, for voicing out a cry for liberation and a firm, a firm affirmation for African American people, which hold true today in our time and places this song now, importantly, for all of us. This song actually uses the word in several places in this national anthem. Our gospel today may have been a little difficult to hear, but the Bible is written so that we may discuss, agree, and disagree. So here are some of the points I found worth mentioning. Now, when a, Jesus says that a disciple is not above a teacher, at the very beginning of this reading, the clear message that I got was that Jesus was saying, we all have gifts, and together we share these gifts for the greater good. Each person among us listening and who are gathered here are important for the greater good, which is for the church, from the cleaning staff to the person that plays the piano. 
Also in verse 26, Jesus reminds us to not be afraid. Friends, we are living in difficult times, and we must strive even further to trust in our faith. Today's image of Christ is not coming down to fix our messes, message, messes by bringing the gift of peace. He's actually bringing a sword. Now, the biblical image of a sword portrays two images. If it's pointing up, we're at war. If it's pointing down, we're at peace. So friends, we, you have to decide which direction your personal sword is pointing, either up for war, down for peace, or towards me, because you don't like what I'm saying. But that's for you to figure out. <laughs> so it's difficult when the world continues to have uprising cases of COVID-19. It's difficult when the world seeks human rights for all. And yes, we also have pointed those swords and not at one another in our confusion. Now we need to understand that terror seems to be all around us, and the sense of rejection gets to the core of our soul. Sometimes scripture and Jesus endured re rejection as Jesus lost his life for us. So today's message is about following Jesus rather than being caught in the snare of evil and getting back to what will our future norm will be. So what was the, Jesus thinking about in verses 34, 39? If you remember hearing it, your thoughts may have been, what in the world Jesus is doing, and hasn't he gone a little bit too far? This dispels, this dispels the image of what we think Jesus looks like and what his temperament is about. We, Jesus sent the disciples on a mission of healings and blessings, and the disciples had to learn the consequences of rejection and opposition. The good old days of following and dining with Jesus are memories of the past for the disciples, and yet this is the story of our current times, we are all tried and persecuted by one another, just as Jesus is asking the faithful then and now to carry on the good news. For in the end, we will be real and have everlasting life is what we hope to find. Now, friends, the church will survive. So in Matthew, Matthew's scripture, he declares, in spite of all the trials and fear, the gospel will always be there for us. Remember, the Holy Spirit will never abandon us, we will come and see that our suffering is not wasted, but a testimony of our faith. And even in the midst of our hardships, we will know we can separate, no one can ever separate us from the love of God. And finally, while family disruptions will take place, Jesus is not against us, but for us. Today is Father's Day. Blessings to all men. Gathered, every man gathered today performs a role in someone's life which is not to be taken for granted. If there's conflict, take some time to try and fix it. If not, pray. I lost my dad on Memorial Day while I was on internship in 2016. While I was on internship, he was planning to move to Arizona to live out the rest of his life, because he had just turned 80 that year. And I spoke with him on that Saturday night before his flight, and he was in good mood, good mood and spirits, and he said, I'm finally going to go home. Well, midnight the next day, mid-flight the next day to Denver, he died of a massive heart attack on the airplane. There was an emergency landing, and they could not revive him. For me, after I, I got over it and thought more about it, he said he was going home. He was truly going home. So take time today to remember the men in your life and give thanks. Let's sing our hymn of the day, O Jesus, I Have Promised, number 810. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
And now, together with the whole church of every time and place, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing God. Your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God. Sustain and keep safe all essential workers and folks especially vulnerable to COVID-19. Today, we especially pray for our brothers and sisters at Faith Lutheran in Cuba City. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Justice and love, 
We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's close with hymn 765, the Lord of all hopefulness. <laughs> Yeah.